Hey, 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 guys, it's Onisha Biggs, and this is the Cult of Pharmacy podcast. <music> Today, I have a fiery young individual, okay? And I say fiery in a good way, not a bad way, all right? Because this girl is super passionate about what she does, and that's why I have her here on the show today. Her name is Kristen. She's going to be able to share with you a lot of insight when it comes to applying to medical school, but she's also a pharmacy technician, so she'll be able to share her journey in that But this girl has some really, really big goals, and I think that you'll really be able to glean a lot of information from her. So I'm not going to say anything more about her. We're going to get into the interview. But Kristen, I want to give you an opportunity right now to introduce yourself to our audience. Hey, guys. My name is Kristen Williams. Um, I am a UNC Charlotte graduate. I'm always repping the Niners. Um, Anyway, since I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, I ran track in college, so I love to work out. All right now I work as a pharmacy technician at the hospital and I have plans on going to medical school to be a doctor. So um, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I love family, I love food, I love fellowship. I love to talk and just help people. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's me in a nutshell. I, I love that. I love that Kristen. And I, I think that all of those things that you just mentioned are all wonderful. How old are you? 24. <laughs> 24 years old, guys. And in my opinion, so level headed, so very level headed. The things that you just said that you enjoy doing, um, it's 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 second to none um, right now, I would say amongst your demographic. So you really have a level head. And I know you have this ultimate goal of being a doctor. I firmly believe that you're going to get it done, not only because of your determination, but because you're just so level headed. <laughs> so you got your, you got your head on straight. You got your focus and your vision. So keep that and stay focused. All right. Okay, well, now, I want to talk to you, though, about um, becoming a pharmacy technician. All right. So you're in North Carolina. You work in a hospital pharmacy. Pretty cool. Have you ever worked in retail? Yes. So I started out in retail. Um, It's not really a funny story, but whenever I was about to graduate college, you know, whenever you, whenever you graduate college, it, it hits you. Like people say, people have told me that, but like, I really, I really felt it. So I was trying to find a good job, a good pre-medical job. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't really working out because a lot of jobs wanted me to work full time during my track season. And I couldn't do that. So right after I, um, Right after I graduated, I just applied to Walgreens. And I don't really know what made me apply to Walgreens, but I was just looking. And um, I applied to Walgreens and I got the job and I didn't really work there for too long um, because the location, it was just so far, it was 45 minutes out of my way. Mm-hmm. And But I learned so much. And of course I got the customer service aspect of it, which I liked, well, I didn't, well, which I needed. I'm not gonna say I liked, but which I, what I needed. Mm-hmm. And, um, I like the fact that pharmacy is so fast paced and there's just so much to learn. And um, I felt like my brain was a sponge and I really, really liked it. I think that's what kept me in pharmacy. Um, It kept me just moving around because I was just like, wow, I'm learning so many things about these drugs. I'm learning about pharmacology. I'm learning about like what these different terms mean and I'm getting my customer service in. So I felt like it was such a good opportunity for me. And so that's kind of how I started. I started in retail. I love that. So, okay. So you, you wanted a, you wanted a medical job basically. All right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assuming it's because of experience, right? You want to start building up that medical experience. Yes. Okay. As most people do. So when you first went, you applied to Walgreens. Yes. First of all, what made you apply to Walgreens? I'm just curious. Cause most people always say I need to get certified before I go work at Walgreens. And I'm like, no, you don't. So yeah. what made you just do that? What made you just choose that? Um, I was I was applying everywhere, but you know that's a great question. I think Walgreens didn't require certification, but I don't I don't I don't remember any of like CVS or any of the other any other places that I applied. I can't remember if they required me to be certified. I don't think they did. I think Walgreens just got back to me the quickest and mm. um, I was just like, okay, yeah, like I need to, I need to go ahead and start working. And I like that. Mm. I wasn't, I like that I could work towards certification as well. So yes. I, knew, I knew that I was going to get certified. I knew that I needed to, 
Um, but yeah, Walgreens didn't, they didn't make it a requirement. So I was just hopping on board. Interesting. Interesting. I got you. So, okay. Now you're working at Walgreens. You're not certified yet. What's, what's that before you get certified though? Cause I, I know you got certified to be working at the pharmacy. Yes. At, at the hospital rather. Tell me what was that retail process like? Like from your honest perspective, cause I always hear a lot of crazy stories. So what um, was that like for you? I, I personally, okay. So at that, at this particular Walgreens, um, I'll go into the customers in a minute, but like, as far yeah. as my, as far as the employees that I was working with, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to uh, get the best opportunity there because there was, there were already two techs there that were certified and that had been there for a while and they mm -hmm. worked full time. So I really was just there to like fill in where I could and work part time. And I knew that they were going, they weren't going to have a position open for me. They were already kind of cutting my hours as time went on because the store couldn't, I guess, afford it or whatever. They, they yeah. had to cut my hours. So I was always getting the short end of the stick. So I knew I was going to have to leave eventually because I, I needed to work full time. Customer wise, um, you know, you got to stay professional. You know, sometimes you have to think, you know, people, they need this medication. Some people, you working in healthcare in general, you're going to meet people at their most vulnerable, lowest points. Yes. So, you know, they are going to lash out. There was a guy that he was in a wheelchair and um, he needed some type of, he needed all these medications. And uh, I guess it was taking too long for us to like count them and put them in the bag and everything. And he was yelling and yelling and yelling. And I'm just like, sir, like, you know, just trying to be professional and just not really allowing you like your attitude to affect me. Um, right. It's so funny because a lot of times like that, it would happen a couple of times where I would just act like it didn't affect me. And I'm just trying to reassure them and be as empathetic as I can. And then after yes. everything's over, oh, I'm so sorry. I was, I just didn't mean to do that. Or I'm just, I was yelling. And sometimes I'm just like, you did mean to do it, but that's okay. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you got what you needed. And I'm still, I, I mean, I'm still going to be, I'm still going to remain professional. So I love um, that. Sometimes they would apologize. Sometimes they would say they were wrong. Sometimes they wouldn't. That's fine. You know, that's just working with people. And like I said, healthcare, you're meeting people at their most lowest point, their most vulnerable point. And some people, they need those medications so bad. And it's just like, if it's out, if we're out, or if we can only give you um, a certain day's worth and you got to come back, it can right. be frustrating. So it is what it is. Right, right, right. And, and it's so interesting that you say that. That That's, whew, when it, I think that's like the pinnacle, besides it being fast paced, that's like another pinnacle for a retail pharmacy. And sometimes it's so hard to get technicians to understand what you understand. You cannot take it personally. Like the, like you say, you just brought out a lot of different factors. They're sick, they're, they're worried, they're having insurance issues, they're wondering how they're gonna pay for this and pay for that. And then they show up and they can't get their meds and they're sick. <laughs> so it's like, and you're the face that they meet. Yep. The pharmacy technician is the face that they meet. So that's a very interesting and key thing that you just brought out there from your experience. You know, those all those things factor in. So I love the fact that you didn't take it personally. So, OK, it's time to get certified. What prompted you to get the certification? Did you just want to get the certification in advance or was it like a job thing? What prompted that? So I wanted to get the certification in advance. Um, it's funny because I was working there for about two months and I was asking some of the interns like, hey, um, what's, the, what's, what's the test like? And they kept telling me, you're not ready. You're not ready. Don't take it yet. You're not ready. Because I only wow. worked there for two months. And I was just like, I know me. So whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it. Um, uh -huh. And so they kept saying, you're not ready, but they, I can give you some... Um, like a packet, it's like the 200 drugs that you have to memorize and the generics versus the brands. And so she gave me that, the paperwork for that. And um, right. I think she may have, she may have told me to, um, some, gave me some resources just to um, be able to help me study. And so I went over those drugs for the first week. I think I went over 25 drugs a day. So we can just go ahead and memorize, memorize. And I, it, I studied for two weeks to, um, I studied for two weeks for the test and I took the test and I passed it. Wow. So I was like, yep. So once I got certified, um, and also that was another thing. So Walgreens has this program where you study, where you take these classes for six weeks, I think, and then you can get certified. But the way that yeah. it was told to me, 
they made it seem like you're going to be certified at Walgreens, but it's not necessarily like the national PTCV certification. That's what they told okay. me. Now that could have changed because I said that on my YouTube channel and somebody said that it's national now. So that may have changed. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't communicate that to me, but I was turned off by their um, program because one, I didn't want to wait six weeks. I needed to work full time mm -hmm. ASAP. And two, I just wanted to be able to have that freedom to do it when I wanted to do it. So I passed it and I got another job and I was just super happy that I passed it that quickly. Love it. So when the 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 other job and, and let me just speak to that really quickly before we move forward. So yes, Walgreens does Walgreens does have a program. Um, when you take their program, of course it is their program. So they feel like you're equipped for Walgreens. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the first thing. First okay. order of business. The second order of business, and this is just insight for the audience, you guys that are listening. The second order of business is. You can, that information is transferable to you taking the national exam. Now I have heard um, just over the years, different people are getting different results from the information. So it just depends. But one thing you can be sure of that it will prepare you, as you said, to be not certified, but like you're equipped to work for Walgreens basically. Okay. All right, so so that that's the, that's how that's navigated, basically. Um, now, okay, so you you got certified, you got this next job. Yes. What was the job? Was it hospital or was it retail pharmacy again? No. Um, I remember you saying something about I got certified and I work at the hospital because I'm certified, but you actually don't have to be certified to work at the hospital because I work with some people that aren't. Just saying. In North Carolina, this is still happening? Yeah. Whew, so listen. If you're in North Carolina, jump on that ASAP because exactly. that even the states that were doing it, especially since all this COVID stuff, like that's been getting nipped. I thought that Texas was one of the last states that was still allowing that, sort of. Uh -huh. um, but it, it's, it's pretty hard to do even still. So the fact that they're just doing that in North Carolina, if you're in North Carolina and you're listening to this, you need to get on that yeah. ASAP, like ASAP. Because <laughs> I always like to, uh, I always like to teach, I teach our audience to leverage. So for instance, if you're not certified, but you're able to get on at a hospital, once you get certified, you're able to ask for more. Absolutely. Okay. So you want to go ahead and get on at the hospital first. That's that's really, really cool. So you weren't, so wait, you were certified before you got to hospital or you weren't? I was. I was certified, but I gotcha. just know people that aren't right now like that I work with. And so yes. yeah, you don't have to be. I thought the same thing, but you don't have to be. Nice. Listen, that man, that you don't understand how rare that is right yeah. now. I thought I really thought Texas was one of the last states to do that or to allow that rather. And they're like shutting it down now. But no, that's really cool to know that North Carolina is still doing it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, OK, you you what was the next job? I worked um, for assistant living, but I wasn't in like a home. I wasn't any in any type of home. It was its own building like the it was its own facility. And um, so we had like the techs that were actually pulling the drugs in mm -hmm. one area. And we had the techs that were dealing with insurance and pr uh, prior authorizations uh -huh. in one cubicle. So it worked like that. And um, so it was a very interesting job because it didn't really have a set hour, like set hours, it didn't really have set pay. Um, what? yeah it was how did that work yeah it was unorganized i'm just gonna say that. it was but they kind of went off of like what your past experience was but like you uh -huh. said leverage leveraging is always important and yes to, um advocate for yourself and, st and stand mm -hmm. up for yourself because they're not gonna just give you whatever you want or give you they're not gonna give you whatever you want but you have to you have to stick up for yourself and know what you're worth because they're not gonna just you know be nice for no reason um but it was interesting. I, I did a lot of just pill counting and we had these things, uh, I forget what they're called, they're like tablet holders where you mm -hmm. have like day one, day two, day three, all the way up to like day 30 or day 60. And like they had the pills in like the little, a little tablet. And I guess um, certain texts would go and deliver like 
boxes of drugs for um, the people in the homes, they would deliver those to the different homes um, throughout Charlotte, throughout the Piedmonts, throughout South Carolina. And nice. uh, that's how we did it. So they deliver every day and um, they would have their drugs that way. So that was very different because it was no customer service. It was no, no one coming up to you asking for anything. Right. Um, and I thought that was a good experience. I think that um, the hours were a lot and that's, and I, I really wanted to work in the hospital because I knew that would give me a, a totally different experience. Um, mm -hmm. But I can say I learned a lot there and I definitely worked really hard there and I made some good connections. So nice. that's where I worked at next. Good deal. Good deal. I, I like, I like that you say you made some good connections because that's another thing. It, it's all about leverage. Whenever you're at a place working, you want to leave the best impression and you want to connect with people because you never know who can leverage you to the next opportunity. So, man, you really got the recipe. That's good. Okay. So, so, um, all right. So from there, you, I'm assuming you went to the hospital. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So right. now you, you talk about leverage. So actually I got the job from somebody that came to my facility. So um, I, worked, I worked at, you know, the the assistant living facility. I call mm -hmm. it a warehouse because it's not really a facility. Right. But, um, the building, whatever. I worked there. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, someone came on. They were new. They came from the hospital. And I was just talking to her. I talked to anybody. But I, we were just talking and um, she told me she, worked at the ho she used to work at the hospital. And I said, I really want to work at the hospital. And so they were actually hiring. So she was like, hey, they're hiring right now. So apply to this job. This is a number, apply. And she yes. said, um, I'm going to call you know, the lead technician because that's my friend. And I'm going to tell her that you're very hardworking in this, this, this. And um, so she did. And eventually I got the job and I was so happy. Yes. Because... It's just like, it's, it is what you know somewhat, but it's who you know. It's who you know. Yes. It's about leveraging relationships, your network. Yes. Yes. And, I love that. Go yeah. ahead. And so that's where, I don't want to say shortly after, because um, let's see, I worked at the warehouse, the facility, the building for mm -hmm. about seven months. I want to say six or seven months before I actually met the young lady. Um, but yes. So now I work at the hospital. So, so happy that I got that job because one, it was better hours. I uh -huh. knew it was going to give me the experience that I needed. And not only was I working in the hospital, but I'm working in an IV room. So I'm working with like in a sterile environment. I'm working with epidurals, like things right. I'm going to put in, in intravenous, intravenously. So it was, it's, it was a good opportunity. And I'm so glad I, I met her so she could help me with that. That's really, really good. Um, so you're okay. So you're not outpatient because hospitals typically have outpatient and inpatient pharmacies. So you're the inpatient pharmacy. And um, that that's really good. Um, I always advise people who want to go into or they, they want something more stable. Usually retail is not the place to find that stability, to be honest, because throughout the year, like flu seasons, it's up and it's down. Then you got other different seasons throughout the year. It's just up and down. It's very volatile in the retail pharmacy. Um, but you said um, that you had more stable hours. I, I'm, I would like to know, like, did you, do you have like a set shift? Yes. So um, I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing right now. It's funny yeah. that you're talking right now because I actually got promoted to another position that's going to put me somewhere else. But I work 6 a.m. to 2.30 or 7 a.m. Okay. to 3.30. So it's first shift. Um, and this position that I have works every other weekend. So um, one week I'll be working like six days because I'll have one day off because uh -huh. that, over, that overcompensates for the fact that I'll be, uh, this is confusing. So I have three days off for one week, including the weekend. And then I have one day off the next week just to like overcompensate for the fact that I'm working every other weekend. It's balancing it. Yeah. I got you. Yes. I got that's, you. That's my shit. But okay. I recently got um, promoted to work at Levine Cancer Institute with chemotherapy drugs. So I'll be oh. working. Um, I'll be working Monday through Friday, no weekends. So every single week like that. Yes. And is it first shift? So I, I think they haven't told me this. So, okay. I'll be training at Levine Cancer Institute for first uh -huh. shift. So six to two 30. 
but they've actually created they they're building some new buildings across the street from the hospital and i think those are doctor's offices so i'll be working it's going to be it's not like a hospital so i don't think it's first or second shift or third shift it's just going to be like seven to three thirty every day gotcha or whenever the patient needs like their chemo They'll call yeah. me in and they'll let me know, hey, we're, we're going to need you to come in at 6.30 this morning or 7.30 this morning or 7.45. They'll, they'll let me know depending on when the patient needs their stuff. That's wonderful. So yeah, you, you are one of the few technicians that I have seen get as much versatile experience. So we're talking about the, I'm going to say it was a warehouse, <laughs> a warehouse that delivered. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh retail pharmacy hospital pharmacy and chemo yes that's huge and that's going to be very very good for your medical career which i do want to get into that <laughs> um but okay so you're you're now you've gotten advanced what do you think was the key component to your advancement across all these levels in pharmacy thus far um like if you could give one key thing that you would say someone must do, what would that thing be? Um, I would say have a good attitude. Mm. Have a good attitude and work hard. I can't, um, I, it's not one thing. I have to have two. Have a, <laughs> okay. <laughs> have okay. a good attitude and work hard. You okay. um, People notice that and I'm gonna be honest, for the people that I was around, you will shot, you will stick out like a like a sore thumb or not a sore thumb, but like a diamond because mm. a lot of people don't have those good attitudes. A lot of people don't work hard. A lot of people, if you can, you can rat out who who tries to get away with just not doing anything and mm -hmm. who who isn't like that. So honestly, um, you know, I got good references from my from some of the pharmacists that I work with from my warehouse job in order to help me with medical school. And I, know, I knew the girl that worked with me. She knew I was hardworking because she's seen me be hardworking. So she had no problem give, using me as, you know, just a good applicant to be like, hey, hire her. And it all was because of my good attitude. It was because I didn't always have a mouth on me. It was because I was willing to work with my teammates and help them out where they needed help at. I was willing to stay a little bit later if they needed it. Um, and I had a good attitude. I, I wasn't mean, I wasn't standoffish. And I, I spoke, if I saw them, hey, good morning, how are you? You know, they noticed, people notice things like that. Yes, so they do. even with the chemo job, my supervisor spoke highly of me. Um, it's actually funny, I'm not gonna get into all this cause it doesn't really matter, but there was actually, there was actually a person that I rarely worked with. She works in chemo. They asked her about me and she was speaking all types of like stuff that was not even true. I have a bad attitude. I'm lazy. I skip, I, mean, I, go, to, I go on breaks. I skip this, I skip that. But the thing is the other people that they asked that knew me completely negated all that out. And so the, in spite of what she said about me, I still got the job. Now I call it God's favor. But, um, like I said, the fact that I did have a good attitude and the fact that I did work hard because of my good attitude and my, and my work ethic, they could speak on that and be like, no, that's not her. So don't right. not hire her. Don't not hire her and get that opportunity because that's not true. So Absolutely. your, your attitude and your temperament will speak for itself if you're consistent. And I think that's what you have to be, be consistent, having a good attitude and be consistently working hard because they notice that and you're going to get rewarded for that in the long run. Oh my God. I, I love that. You, you just, wow. You just don't have a clue. Like you're 24 years old. Listen, I talk to 30 year old, 40 year old entrepreneurs all the time. And it's so hard to get some people to understand those basic concepts of just, we, we look for people like look for all these different hacks and strategies and yeah, you know, but they don't have the foundation right, you know, and that's so true what you said. People notice, I mean, just saying good morning. Yep. Just being having manners. Yeah. Like, it just stands out. It's just like a bright light, you know, and it, it captures the attention. Like you really have the recipe. <laughs> I want to know. Let, tell me a little bit about your upbringing because because I, I don't want people to feel like 
this is like, oh, you're an anomaly and it's so far-fetched. Just give me a little bit about your upbringing. I know that you're an athlete. I just heard you say you ran track. So I'm sure you learned a lot of the teamwork principles from there, probably some leadership stuff, determination, grit. You know, you really, did you do it? In, you play sports in college, right? Yes. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, that's a different, that's a different level. I understand. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing and how you feel you learned these type of principles. Um, I had, have great parents, great parents. Love um, that. now, now I'm not going to brag, but my mom did say I was easy, easy to raise. She has said that before. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm just, um, I'm a nice person. I'm an easygoing person. So my personality, yes. I'm just really cool, easygoing. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not really with, you know, the attention or anything like that, but I have, I have good parents. Um, uh, my dad actually, he passed away two years ago, um, oh, wow. to cardiac arrest but he was such a such an inspiration to me um if you think that i'm like a good person he is like an extraordinary person wow. um you know he he grew up in indianapolis um he didn't have his father in his life um he took care of his two brothers and wow. he was so responsible he went to UNC charlotte became this you know freak athlete played professional basketball he ended up becoming a pastor after he um, retired from basketball, didn't get paid oh. for seven years for salary for the church just because he was like, I'm here to be a light and I'm here to, to help serve. people. Yeah, I'm here to serve. Wow. Um, and so he didn't he didn't take a salary. That just goes to show his character. And I think that yeah. um, that shines through me, even throughout his health issues. He was so positive. His nurses would be like, you know, how are you this positive? He, I think it even showed through his body because his, he was recovering even though at the end of the at the end of the day he did pass away but he was just so the way he carried himself so um diligent so so faithful so i i can't even i can go on and on about him but i think yeah. that he's really a lot why i am the way that i am because i think we are a lot alike and i get that from him his dna um but anyways i have great parents um and i just i just want i, I think just being an older sister i have two siblings I have a younger brother and a younger sister and um, I think just being that example for them is what made me that way also playing sports I love sports I think they teach so many good things uh, and they 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 mm -hmm. help you learn they help you grow they help you increase your confidence increase your teamwork they help you learn that you are good at something that you do enjoy these mm -hmm. things they give you the opportunity to just learn more about yourself so I, I think sports contributed a lot to that and also um the things that I was a part of in college and in high school helped me learn more about myself and learn what I like to do. And I think that um, I was a walk on in college and learning wow. that you know, I can work hard and I ended up with a full scholarship just about. Wow. That That's great. Huge. So the fact that the, the goals that I was setting, I was meeting, that also helped me become the person that I am because I can do whatever I put my mind to. And it's showing it's manifesting yeah every every situation so that's why i am who i am my parents um my personality and just my situations me setting those goals and sticking to it and accomplishing it that's why that's why i am who i am so that's that's man wow i mean you like you just don't understand how much in a, of a you need to be on platforms i'll just say that I'll just say that because I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad our audience gets a chance to hear this because there's some young person out there that's um, in high school or a young person that lost a parent. You know, I lost my dad when I was in high school. Um, that was my freshman year in high school, as a matter of fact. And um, I was in, in my town and in my state, I was a star athlete. And so that was a big hit for me, you know, um, to experience that publicly. Yes, yeah, there's nothing like it. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was disappointing, you know. Um, but the the fact that you, I mean, I can see how your parents have framed your outlook. Like your outlook is just so amazing. So many people when they when they see even pharmacy or a career, they see barriers. They see hurdles that maybe I can't get over. But your outlook is more like, hey, I may be the weakest link right now. But that's okay. I can learn my attitude. I can maneuver. I can, you know, I can survive and I can, like you said, whatever I put my mind to, I can advance. And so I think it's so good that others are going to get to hear this and get to hear that type of mindset because it's needed. 
it's very, very much so needed in spite of obstacles, because you've had your obstacles too. I mean, to hear that you were a walk-on, that's not easy in college. Yeah. You know, I thought maybe you got the full scholarship from high school, yeah. but yeah. no, to walk on at a college and they give you a full, full scholarship, that's not easy because they're investing in you as an athlete. So kudos to you on that. That that's super awesome. Thank so, you. so, okay. You're, you're working in hospital. You're, you're advancing. What would you tell? Um, Cause we're going to get into the medical field stuff, but what would you tell someone who was thinking about getting in pharmacy from my honest opinion? Like, would you tell them go for it? Would you tell them, yeah, become a pharmacy tech, do it. Or would you say, uh, honestly, if I could have done it differently, I would have done this. What would you say? Um, like in a hospital or just pharmacy in general? Ah, okay. That, that's interesting. <laughs> so first I want you to give me just in general. Then I want you to go deeper and, and give me like the nuances with the hospital. Um, I think I have a feeling what, what I think you're going to say. <laughs> but I want to hear what you're gonna say first. Um, I say if you want to be if you want to be a tech. Uh, I want to know why why do you want to be a tech first? But I would say go for it. I think that it's a good opportunity. I think that you learn a lot, and um, depending on where you are, there are a lot of opportunities for in advancement that can okay. be you know lead technician wise. That can be of, of course increasing your salary. And uh, you do start to create connections with certain patients because, or yeah, patients, because they do start to see your face and that you become a trustworthy source and they start, right. that you really do, you can create those connections. Um, I've seen mm -hmm. it done. So I say it's a good opportunity. Um, as far as hospital goes, there are some warnings. So people have warned me, um, but you know, I like to just figure out things for myself and just see how see how I vibe with certain things because uh -huh. they're different. Um, I will say, uh, working in the pharmacy, there are a lot of women in pharmacy. Okay. okay. Um, it, it can get very, very catty and petty. Uh-huh. I'm just saying, people told me that before, but I was just like, oh, I'm here to work. I'm here to do this. Right. Um, I can say, even if you are here to work and here to do this and that, people will find a way to just, um tear you down mm -hmm. um I don't really know why but that's just how how it is at least at my pharmacy but I've heard this throughout uh a lot of pharmacies so yeah. it is what it is politicking okay. like that yeah it's it's pretty common I, I experienced it myself um yeah. working in a pharmacy it is it's, it's it's common so just be prepared for that number two where I work at um it's a lot of physical hard work so we deal with like um TPN bags, like total parental nutrition, the uh -huh. bags with, you know, miner, uh, vitamins and minerals and right. things like that. And um, it's just a lot of work hanging them, moving them around. And you have a lot of like fluid bags that have sterile water and dextrose in it and amino acids. And you, you're you doing a lot of caring, bending down. And we have to do some cleaning. So it's very physical. So if you're looking to like lose some weight, I know some ticks that have. <laughs> Um, Cause you will yes. it's so it's bigger. Yes. It's a lot. It's exercise. I checked my Fitbit one time and I've burned like 2,800 calories. Oh, what? In one, in one, uh, one day, in one well, day's work, in one day's work, I'll, not in one day's work. Okay. This was over the full day. So I, I was, I did work out that day. So let's take that out. I will say I burned like a, I burned. Okay. No, sorry. I burned a thousand calories, um, at by 9 a.m. I'll say that from six, from six a.m. to that's 9 still insane. That's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, insane. Yeah, if you did eat a meal, like you basically didn't eat. <laughs> so if you're looking, you know, if you're okay with that, yeah, I say go for it. But it is physical. It's physical. Yeah, it's pretty um, physical. And so that's just that's all I'll say on that. But those are just my main two things. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So um what about what if if what if I'm a person and I had a bad attitude, but I want to work in pharmacy because nope. I, I can make some good money. What would you say to me? Uh it, you know, you can make some good money somewhere else where you're not doing that. You can't have a bad attitude one and work in retail. You can't have a bad attitude and work with customers. You can't have a bad attitude and try to work with people that you're working with, other employees. That's right. Um you can't do it. You know, first I want to know why do you have a bad attitude? 
But anyway, that's neither here nor there at this point. I just feel like if you're trying to work in pharmacy, no, a bad attitude is not going to cut it. Now, I've seen it done. I'm around people with bad attitudes right now, but they're mm-hmm. struggling. They're right. struggling. And every day is something different. And who wants to go through that? Every day, life right. is too short. Right, right. So just going, like going through the motions of life. Yeah, because if you're coming into work every day, yeah, you want to have a pretty pleasant, you'd like to have a pleasant experience especially I know when I worked in the pharmacy in the hospital, we had the same staff. So I worked the graveyard shift. Oh, wow. It was, it was actually pretty fun though. It was okay. fun. There were those staff members that was like, oh, here we go. But for the most part, you see, I'm smiling because when I think back on some of my teammates, it was just fun. Like the pharmacists and stuff, they were pretty cool. So that's good now, that you say that because I have not experienced that. Wow. I don't, I don't want to harp on that on it too much because I don't want to run out of time. But it's been it's a lot of division between the pharmacists and the techs, and oh. we are we are looked down upon. I've I've never experienced this ever except in the hospital where we are looked down upon a lot, and it's like well we so, need each other. So what does that look down upon look like from a pharmacist? Um, we can they can send in a label for something to be for something to be done, mm-hmm. and the nurse can be outside of the pharmacy waiting. And they'll like snap at us like, well, where is it at? Has it been done yet? Well, you just passed us the label. How can we do it that quick? Um, We actually had to speak with someone and advocate for ourselves multiple times because they wanted us to deep clean the whole entire IV room while doing our job on top of that. They didn't understand how we couldn't get it done. But they are also not in there to see what we do every day. So it's very frustrating. And a lot of um, pharmacists, they have implicit bias because they think uh, a lot of us are of color and they they think that we automatically don't want to do what is we're supposed to do they the think combative they want to assume that we you know want to just do wrong and want to have an attitude or do this but they don't understand that they provoke a lot of these things so it's a big conflict where I'm, I'm at right now and it's part of why I'm trying to you know do chemo and just experience something else because it is it's bad. It, I'm sorry. I hate to say it, but it's bad where I'm at. And this yeah. is not every pharmacy. It's not every hospital, but where I am, it's a lot of condescending attitudes and tones. And it's like, we wow. both need each other. So why, yeah, yeah, yeah. why are we this way? The unity's not there. And you know, something else that I hear in you saying that I hear what I hear is that it's just people who don't understand one another. Like a lot of times it's just coworkers who don't understand each other's role. Yeah. And when you don't understand the other person, you can't really respect the things that matter to them because you don't know what matters to them. You don't know what their experience is yeah. in the workplace. So like you said, they expect you to deep clean and it's like, do you know what we do in here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you did, you probably wouldn't be requesting that. And so um, that that's that's a pretty interesting concept that you bring out. And um Wow, I'm going to have more pharmacists on here and we're going to be able to discuss and go into some things like that because I love to understand it from their perspective as well. So that, that's that's really, really good. And, and I'm glad to hear that you're open to understanding that as well. So um, tell me about medical school. Tell, tell us about that. So you're wanting to go to medical school. Yes. We're, we're, we're here now. You're, you're working in the pharmacy. You're, you've advanced. Yes. What's the plan and how, how are you navigating that, getting to medical school? Okay, well, last year I actually, I took the MCAT. Of course, everyone hates this darn MCAT. I do too. I've heard about uh, it. Yes, it's terrible. Um, in my opinion, well, no, it's terrible. Everybody knows that. It's a bear. And um, I took it last, I took it in 2020. 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I had plans to go to medical school a year after I graduated. Um, simply because I was just afraid to be out of school for too long. But I ended up applying last year just to see where I fit in. And I actually got accepted into an osteopathic program. But um, deep within myself, I didn't really feel that I should take that opportunity because one, um, I was waitlisted first and then I got accepted like a month before class was going to start, which wasn't a problem. I still could have taken it. But Mm -hmm. deep down, I knew that I would have been settling and I knew that I should take the MCAT again so I can open my horizons up if I wanted to go somewhere else. Some people don't don't understand because they think, well, if you got accepted, go. But I knew in, within myself I was settling. And right. um, I know school is school and you can go to school and still be a doctor. It doesn't change. But for me, I wanted certain experiences and I didn't want to settle. So I ended up retaking the MCAT again um, a couple months later. I took it back in August. 
this past August and um, got a better score, increased by seven points. So if whoever's listening, if you know someone wanted to take the MCAT, your fit dot at your fit dot on Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. That's me or um, on YouTube. I'm Kristen Simone, which I'll say that later. But anyways, increased my MCAT and I reapplied to eight other schools. So right now I am just waiting to hear back. I've gotten some interviews and things like that. Um, and I've also, you know, working at the hospital now doing chemo at living cancer institute so getting those experiences down under my belt as well so that's where i am right now and in in the middle of all that i wanted to be of help to other people so i started my youtube channel talking about application processes and interviews and things like that right and so that's where i'm at right now so 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 have you have you have you interviewed have you gone through some interviews and what's the biggest tip that you would give on that? Um, so now they're virtual. So I would say, yes, I have had interviews. And if they give you any information about who you're interviewing with, make mm-hmm. sure that you, because sometimes they do, make sure that you look up that person's name. You may be interviewing with two or three people. Look them up. Look them up on the school website. Look and see what they've done clinically, research-wise. And try to just create a conversation whenever you're interviewing with them. Um, I think that it definitely creates a more personable touch and it makes you stand out because it shows that you've invested the time to actually right. research these people. Um, also, I would say just a lot enough time for you to get ready. You know you, but I would say at least like an hour and a half, a lot that time for you to eat, take a shower. If you're going to do your makeup, you know, two, an hour and a half to two hours in order for you to get ready. That way you are prompt and on time for your interview. Um, and lastly, just be yourself. Be yourself. Yes. Um, You know, they do, they're very picky when it comes to who's going to get in and who doesn't. And um, they can tell when you're being genuine or not. Mm -hmm. It's just important to be personable, be yourself and um, be vulnerable because vulnerability creates conversations. Those conversations lead to better interviews. They really get to know who you are as a person. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. So, so what type of doctor do you want to be? Do you want to be general or are you going to specialize? I don't know. People ask me this. And I, at first I wanted to do general surgery or work with like endocrinology, like hormones. Um, but I really mm. want to let my clinical experience push me and just speak to me. I don't really see myself being a primary care physician or a general practitioner because I want, I know that I want to be able to know a lot about like one specific thing. I feel mm-hmm. like as general practitioners, you know, a lot, but you have to do a lot of referring if the right. problem isn't fixed. And I don't think I want to do that. Gotcha. So you want to master one area. Okay. That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. And that's pretty good actually. Um, okay. All right. Awesome. So let me, let me ask you this, cause you got some pretty lofty goals, but you got a lot of grit. Um, you, you know how to, you know how to push forward. So if you could tell anybody who they're thinking about getting in pharmacy or they have some goals in front of them that they're like, uh, seems a little too lofty or seems a little too hard, what would you say to that person? I would say to one, whatever goals that you have, write them down and also come up with a plan. Um, I'm, I'm really good on, I'm big on planning and setting and setting little goals to achieve your big goals. Mm-hmm. So come up with a plan, come up with a frequency plan. So um, if your goal is to lose 15 pounds, okay? So when are you gonna start? And when do you want to lose 15 pounds? Also, what are you going to do every week in order to help you lose those 15 pounds? Mm -hmm. Um, Are you going to work out how many times a week? How many hours every time that you work out? You know, what are you going to eat? uh, What what are you going to eat every day of of that week? Okay, let's let's replicate that for the week after that and the week after that. What are we going to weigh ourselves? Um, you know, how much water are we going to drink? So it's important to be detail oriented whenever you're planning. And like I said, Think about things frequently. If you have a goal, let's start, let's set little goals every three weeks. You know, let's think about that. So I would just say, if you have a goal, like I said, plan for it Mm -hmm. and just stay focused and make sure that you have a support system that pushes for you and encourages you because that makes all the difference. Love that. Love that. Love that. Oh my gosh, so many gems. Um, so so um, we're, we're about to end it out here. Okay. But I, I want for our audience, all the healthcare workers that are going to be listening to this, what does Kristen want to say to them? 
what would you what what's that what's that one central message from you that you that you want them to know and that you want them to move forward with um i just want everybody to know that you can do absolutely anything that you put your mind to absolutely anything um as long as you have a good attitude and you work hard and you make those connections that you need to with your good attitude you will go far um all it takes is a strong mindset you can do absolutely whatever you put your mind to so don't let what anyone else says or other people you don't know you don't know people's story everyone has their own story and it's up to yes. you to create your own story and to dominate your story so do that love that love it love it love it <laughs> so listen guys you heard it here like there is so much I can say about this young lady, but you heard it here. She's telling you move forward anyway. All right. Don't let what people say, people on your job, sometimes people in your family, sometimes friends. All right. Um, people are going to have their doubts, but you know, your story, you know, your journey, you know, your path and you know, your goals. Yep. So stick to it. And you've heard it from Kristen here on the code of pharmacy podcast that you can do it. You can do it. Mm -hmm. And so to our audience that's listening right now, I want you to comment below if you have any questions. And I want you to comment below a big lofty goal that you have. I'm not talking about a small goal. I want like a big one. I want one that kind of scares you. Yeah. All right. I want a big, scary goal. And Kristen, where can our audience find you? Yes. So my name is Kristen Simone on YouTube, K-R-I-S-T-E-N. Simone, S-I-M-O-N-E. Kristen Simone, AKA Your Fit Doc. That is what I call myself because I love to work out. So I'm um, at Your Fit Doc on Instagram. Y-O-U-R-F-I-T-D-O-C. Your Fit Doc on Instagram, guys. Get at me, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Just let me know what you want to see because I'm here. Love it, love it, love it. There you have it, guys. Kristen Simone, your fit doc. <laughs> this has been another episode of the Code of Pharmacy podcast. I hope and I know that you guys got some value from this. We'll be seeing you guys on the next episode. We'll talk soon. Have a wonderful day.